In this video, we're going to be talking about quadratic forms. So far, we've mostly looked at systems of linear equations, things of the form some matrix A times X equals some vector B. We call these things systems of linear equations because for each of these equations, the degrees of the variables are at most one. For example, let's look at the matrix equation 1, 2, 3, 4 times X equals the vector 5, 6. This here can be thought of as a system of equations where we have x1 plus 2x2 equals 5 and 3x1 plus 4x2 equals 6. Again, these are linear equations because the degrees of the variables x1 and x2 are at most 1. On the other hand, a quadratic form is a polynomial in n variables where the terms are all degree 2. Let's look at some examples of quadratic forms. So let q1 be the polynomial x1 squared. This is a quadratic form in one variable, and here I have the x1 and it's squared, so it's degree 2. Let q2 be the polynomial x1 squared plus x2 squared. This is a quadratic form in two variables. Here, both of these terms are degree 2. Let's consider q3 be the polynomial x1 squared plus 2x1x2 plus 3x2 squared. This is also a quadratic form. I have x1 squared, that's degree 2. The x2 squared is also degree 2. But then we also say that the x1 times x2 term is also degree 2 because I have the product of two of my variables. Now, we call this x1, x2 term here a cross product term. So in our first two examples, q1 and q2, we don't have any cross product terms, but we do have a cross product term in q3. Let's look at one more polynomial. Let q4 be the polynomial x1 squared plus x3 squared minus 5x1, x2 plus 7x2, x3. So here we have a quadratic form in three variables, x1, x2, and x3. We have some terms that aren't cross product terms, so that's the x1 squared and the x3 squared. But then the minus 5x1, x2 and the plus 7x2, x3, those are both cross product terms. One thing to note is that any quadratic form can be expressed as q of x equals x transpose times a times x where A is an n by n symmetric matrix. This matrix A is called the matrix of the quadratic form. Let's look at some examples. So here we're asked to find the quadratic form. So in our first example, we have Q of X equals X transpose times I2 times X. Now, since the matrix of the quadratic form is the two by two identity matrix, in order for this matrix multiplication to make sense, x has to be a two-dimensional vector. So let's say x is the vector x1, x2. So we're looking at x1, x2 transpose times the two by two identity matrix times x1, x2, which can be written as x1, x2 times 1, 0, 0, 1 times x1, x2. Multiplying the matrix and the vector on the right hand side, I get x1, x2 times x1, x2. Then finally, when I multiply x transpose with x, I get x1 squared plus x2 squared. So the quadratic form given by x transpose times the 2 by 2 identity matrix times x is x1 squared plus x2 squared. Let's try another one. If I have Q of X equals X transpose I3 times X, since the matrix of the quadratic form is the three by three identity matrix, in order for this matrix multiplication to make sense, X has to be a three dimensional vector. So let's say that X is the vector X1, X2, X3. So I'll have X transpose here times the three by three identity matrix times x1, x2, x3. Now, when I multiply the identity matrix to x, I just get x back. 
So I'm left with x transpose times x. Multiplying these two things together, I get x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. So the quadratic form that's represented by x transpose i3x is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. Now let's find the quadratic form for q of x equals x transpose times the matrix 2, negative 3, negative 3, 4 times x. So since the matrix of the quadratic form is a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix, I know that x has to be a two-dimensional vector. So let's say it's x1, x2. So I have x1, x2 transpose times the matrix 2, negative 3, negative 3, 4 times x1, x2. Multiplying the matrix with the vector x, I get x1, x2 times 2x1 minus 3x2 minus 3x1 plus 4x2. Then multiplying these two things together, I have x1 times 2x1 minus 3x2 plus x2 times negative 3x1 plus 4x2. So once I distribute and collect the like terms, I end up with 2x1 squared minus 6x1x2 and then plus 4x2 squared. So that's the quadratic form that I get from doing x transpose times the matrix 2, negative 3, negative 3, 4 times x. So notice here that the 2 in front of the x1 squared is this entry right here. And the 4 in front of the x2 squared is this entry right here. And then the minus 6x1, x2 is the sum of the off diagonal entries here. Now let's consider the quadratic form given by x transpose times the generic 2 by 2 symmetric matrix given by a, b, b, c times x. So here x is a two-dimensional vector, which I'll call x1, x2. So we have x1, x2 transpose times a, b, b, c times x1, x2. Multiplying the matrix and the vector x together, I get x1, x2 times the vector ax1 plus bx2, bx1 plus cx2. Then multiplying these two vectors together, we get x1 times ax1 plus bx2 plus x2 times bx1 plus cx2. Multiplying things out and combining the like terms, I get ax1 squared plus 2bx1x2 plus cx2 squared. So again, what we notice here is that the non-cross product terms, meaning the x1 squared here, the coefficient a is given by this diagonal entry a here. The coefficient for the x2 squared term, the c here, is given by the diagonal entry c here. And the cross product term has coefficient 2b, which is the sum of the off diagonal terms here. So now let's look at the 3 by 3 case. If I have x transpose times a generic 3 by 3 symmetric matrix, a, b, c, b, d, e, c, e, f times x, then x is a three-dimensional vector, x1, x2, x3, transpose times the matrix a, b, c, b, d, e, c, e, f times x1, x2, x3. Multiplying out the matrix and the vector, I get here x1, x2, x3 times the vector ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3. Then I have bx1 plus dx2 plus ex3. And then I have um, cx1 
plus EX2 plus FX3. Multiplying this out, I get X1 times AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3 plus X2 times BX1 plus DX2 plus EX3 plus X3 times CX1 plus EX2 plus FX3. Distributing and collecting the like terms, I get AX1 squared. I get plus 2BX1X2 plus 2CX1X3 plus D times X2 squared plus 2E times X2, X3 plus F times X3 squared. So now let's look at the coefficients and how they relate to the matrix for the quadratic form. Now, the non-cross product terms, the x1 squared, the x2 squared, and the x3 squared, they have coefficients a, d, and f. a, d, and f are these diagonal entries of my matrix. The first diagonal entry a corresponds to the coefficient of x1 squared. The second diagonal entry d corresponds to the coefficient of x2 squared. And then the third diagonal entry, f, corresponds to the coefficient of x3 squared. Now, let's look at the cross product terms. x1, x2 is 2b, which is the sum of the 1, 2 entry and the 2, 1 entry. The coefficient of x1, x3 is 2c, which is the sum of the 1, 3 entry and the 3, 1 entry. And lastly, the coefficient of the cross product term x2, x3 is 2e, which is the sum of the 2, 3 entry and the 3, 2 entry. So let's now look at some examples where we're given a quadratic form and we're asked to find the corresponding matrix so that we can write the quadratic form as x transpose a x. So in this first entry, we're given the quadratic form x1 squared plus 2x1, x2 plus 3x2 squared. So the matrix for a quadratic form will be a 2 by 2 matrix since I have two variables. Now from what we found out above, the diagonal entries of this matrix are going to be the coefficients of the non-cross product terms. So here the coefficient of x1 squared is 1, so my first diagonal entry is 1. The coefficient for x2 squared is 3, so my second diagonal entry is 3. Now for my off diagonal entries, I have the 1, 2 entry and the 2, 1 entry. The sum of those entries will add up to the coefficient of x1, x2, which is 2. Since A is a symmetric matrix, the off diagonal entries in this case are the same, which means that if I want to find these off diagonal entries, I just take the coefficient of x1, x2 and divide by 2. In this case, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so the off diagonal entries of my matrix are 1s. So the matrix 1, 1, 1, 3 is the matrix of the quadratic form. One thing to note is that we can also evaluate these quadratic forms at specific points. For example, if I want to evaluate Q at the point, say, 3, 4, then I can do it in two ways. I can just plug it in directly into the quadratic form, so that gives me 3 squared plus 2 times 3 times 4 plus 3 times 4 squared. This gives me 9 plus 24 plus 48, which sums up to 81. Another way I can evaluate this quadratic form at 3, 4 is by thinking of the quadratic form as x transpose a times x. In this case, I would be looking at the vector 3, 4 transpose times the matrix, which we just found, 1, 1, 1, 3, times 3, 4. And we should get the same thing here. So I have 3, 4. If I do the matrix multiplication, I get 3 plus 4, and then 3 plus 12. So that's 3, 4 times the vector 7, 15. 
So that's 3 times 7 plus 4 times 15, which is 81. Let's look at one last example. So suppose we have the quadratic form q equals 2x1 squared minus x3 squared plus 5x1x2 minus 8x1x3. So here the matrix of the quadratic form would be a 3 by 3 matrix. The diagonal entries of this matrix correspond with the coefficients of x1 squared, x2 squared, and x3 squared. For x1 squared, the coefficient is 2, so my first diagonal entry is 2. I don't have an x2 squared term, so my second diagonal entry is going to be 0. My third diagonal entry is the coefficient of x3 squared, which is negative 1. So I have negative 1 here. So again, A is a symmetric matrix. I know that the sum of the 1, 2 entry and the 2, 1 entry is going to be the coefficient of x1, x2. In this case, the coefficient is 5. So the entries here would be 5 divided by 2. So I have 5 halves here and 5 halves here. The sum of the 1, 3 entry and the 3, 1 entry would be the coefficient of x1, x3. In this case, the coefficient is negative 8, so those entries will be negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. Lastly, we have the 2, 3 entry and the 3, 2 entry. Those entries sum up to the coefficient of x2, x3. Since I don't have an x2, x3 term in my quadratic form, I know that coefficient is 0. So this tells me that my 2, 3 entry is 0 and my 3, 2 entry is 0. So the matrix 2, 5 halves, negative 4, 5 halves, 0, 0, negative 4, 0, negative 1 is the matrix of this quadratic form. So that's where I'll end this video. In our next video, we'll talk about rewriting quadratic forms so that they don't have any cross product terms. And we'll do this by making a change of coordinates.